It's hard to believe that this is the last time that I'll preach to you as one of your parish priests, though I hope not the last time ever. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, many of you have reflected back to me that we knew this day would come when I would leave. But for some reason, that knowing hasn't made it any less bittersweet to part ways. And as my tears have evidenced over the past several Sundays, I have loved you with my whole heart over these five years. The decision to leave was very difficult, and yet I feel excited and humbled to be joining our bishop's staff and to be serving as canon to the ordinary sharing in the ministry of the Diocese of Ohio as we go forward. I was grateful this week to find a partner in reflection in Jesus in our gospel from Matthew. This is the third week in a row that we have read from that 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel. It forms what's known as the missionary discourse which are Jesus's final words of sending to his disciples before they go out to do their mission and their ministry. And I thought what better way to end this part of our pastoral relationship than to look at Jesus's words of sending. These words form what some have called a kind of Christian handbook, giving us a sense of what we should expect out there in the world doing our work of ministry. The first thing he does at the beginning of the 10th chapter is he gathers all of the disciples together and he gives them authority to do what they need to do, which in their case was to cast out unclean spirits and to cure every disease. He tells them, wherever you go from here, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. He told them to seek out welcome wherever they go and on the occasions where they don't find it, to shake the dust off their feet and go on to the next place. Be wise as serpents, he tells them, and innocent as doves. And then we get to the part of the reading that if you were here or somewhere in church last week, you heard, which is where he warns them that things will get hard, that relationships will suffer and divisions will increase. They will face persecution and danger, but don't lose heart, he says. It will be worth it in the end, for your reward will be great. I've been reflecting a lot over the past few weeks about some of the big moments that have happened in these five years that we've shared. And I thought maybe first of the unmatched glory of Christmas at St. Paul's. And I remembered my first Christmas here. It was during the 4 p.m. Christmas pageant, which some have affectionately nicknamed a Zucharist because we let live animals come in. And there we were in the middle of the pageant, and just as the donkey was about to make his grand entrance into the nave, he decided that that was the moment he needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and so I watched from about here as a crowd of ushers and parents huddled to clean up literal donkey poop as we sang, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs> And I'm glad to say Lauren Dockery has photo evidence of this moment, which features some of you here in this room playing a hero's role. <laughs> and then I thought of the moments, the chapter of COVID and what that was like. And how on the first Sunday after the lockdown, Jeannie and I came here and we sat right here on these steps and looked out on empty pews and we recorded a brief video to you guys. And I remember what my body felt like, the fear and adrenaline rushing through. It felt so unreal in that moment, and yet it was just the beginning. And then there were the big transition marking moments too. 
the many funerals officiated, beloved saints laid to rest, baptisms of young and old alike, and the weddings too. One I will never forget was the honor to officiate our rector Jeannie's wedding to her husband Gary. This building, this place is chock full of love, loss, and relationships. It was here in this building after staff meeting that my water broke and I went into labor with our second son who's sitting right there. <laughs> Here, where dreams of ministry were planted, relationships formed, and lives changed. These are big moments, all of these. But what strikes me as I look at the end of Jesus' words to his disciples is that he focuses not on the big moments, but on the small gestures like a cup of water given to the little ones, as he calls the disciples. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name, truly they will never lose their reward, he says. This is the parting words of Jesus. Not a charge to do great or life culture changing things, although he knows that too will come, but a reminder to take care of the small gestures, a cup of water, reminding them as they set out to be kind to one another, swift to love. And what strikes me as well as I look at Jesus' parting words is how much he focuses on welcome. He says again and again six times the word welcome in three verses. Whoever welcomes you in the name of a disciple welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me, Jesus says. And as many of you know, welcome and incorporation of newcomers has been a major piece of my ministry here. And as I look out, I see the faces of many of you who have joined the parish over these years. It has been a profound privilege to sit across the table from people, to share how we got to where we are and where we saw God along the way, to welcome people into this vibrant community and help them find their place in their new spiritual home. As Jesus says, the, the practice of welcoming newcomers is one that is greatly rewarding. I take comfort in these last words of Jesus of sending, reminding us as we set out on our separate yet still connected paths of ministry that welcome is the first and the last thing. Welcoming each other into community, allowing ourselves to be welcomed. That we're to show kindness to one another, to those who fit in and those who don't, to those who are young and those who are old, to those who are like us and those who are different. And as we part ways, I thank you for the ways that you have welcomed me and Joe and Abe and Bax. And I pray that you will continue to welcome people into this community, showing them kindness, sometimes in grand fashion, sometimes in small gestures like a cup of water. For by welcoming each other, we welcome Jesus. And we know because we've already experienced a glimpse of it together, that our reward will be great. Amen. <laughs>